Hi everyone. I'd like to introduce you today to something called the Revit API Docs. It is a web page which gives us access to the um, object model of Revit as we can program against it. I'd like to demonstrate it for you but with reference to this node that we have over here with which we are using a command to get the to room and from room properties of a door and specifically the method that we are using is called get spatial element from to calculation points and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this text and work in reverse for you and let's have a look at the Revit API docs here you can see Revit API docs we are looking at the 2020 um, Revit API docs over here. It's going all the way from 2016 through till 2020. On the opening page, it will tell you what's new in the Revit 2020 API and then the Revit API 2020 official reference guide. So these are all the new methods that might be available to us. Right, so it's most programmers then have to adjust their um, their scripts every year that's why you'll see that the add-ons that come out for Revit are usually coming out later than the software itself and then they've got the help over here all right so let's get back to where we were it's got this great little search box that you can paste things in there we can see the get spatial element from two calculation points method if we go to this method it finds it for us and it lists it for us under the family instance class and under the family instance methods there we can see one of the many methods that are available to us is the get spatial element from calculation points method and we then have an explanation of what this is um, just the syntax how to use it and you can see it's listing it for C sharp it's a programming language visual basic and then visual C++ and it says it's a list of 3d points and it's got some remarks for a family instance which connects two room or spaces such as a door or window the points determine which room the space is considered the from and which is considered to be the two points and there's no real examples of how it is used for programming but with some search on the internet you could find that now what else can you learn from this all right let's have a look at the family instance class if I click on the family instance class I can see that we've got members examples and see also so let's have a look at these there's the members the name and then a description what it does you can add coping to a steel beam there's all sorts of things that you can do with this and it's quite a long list and then we've got the properties of them and again you can grab each and every one of these properties if you know how using the code so there's a lot more than what you can do for instance here the space in which the instance is located during the last phase of the project um, and so on All right, so it's something that caught my eye as we scroll through it um, okay so that's the uh, let's just go back one there's an example and here we can see in C sharp there's an example of how somebody has programmed against this the same thing in visual um, uh, in visual basic so this is usually where where I read the code and then I translate it into Python um, so Python isn't directly available here but you'll have to interpret what you see over here if you wanted to guide you here you can see they're getting the family instance host name so if a window is in a door or uh, if a window is in a wall or a door is in a wall it will get that or if it's in a ceiling um, there they've got the family instance room name and so onwards and so forth so you can grab whatever is exposed by the element there all right so most of what we work with in revit 
is in a namespace. So the namespace over here is Autodesk uh, Revit.de dot namespace. And those are the typical sort of generic items that we work with. Um, but what is also important to note is that when you are uh, working for instance with plumbing then you might also want to have access to the plumbing namespace so there you can see the um <coughs> some of the other namespaces that we have here there's the sorry here we go there's the mechanical namespace for instance all right so here we can find our ducts the duct class all right so if you're a MEP engineer and you want to program some ducts let's have a look at the duct class here it is there's the duct members we go to the members and we see these are the methods right there you can see you can create a new duct that connects two connectors and so on and so forth so I've used this mechanical um, and lighting namespaces before there should be an electrical namespace as well to go and collect some connectors we should find the connectors in here as well there's some conduits and so it will be necessary then to link those back into the script so let me give you an example of what that looks like over here there you can see if this was a um, there it is from autodesk.db revit db import everything that's the asterisk and then from autodesk dot revit dot db dot plumbing import everything so that's when you're drawing pipes and if you look at the revit api import from autodesk dot revit dot db dot plumbing and in here we will find our pipe class so not everything is going to be in the autodesk db space it's also going to be some other things over here within each one of these subcategories if you want um yeah so this is quite a large subject as you can see the um, user interface and you can see you can see the actual revit and um, a lot more besides there's a lot that's going on here all right i'm just going back to the home page Look on the right over here, yeah, where you've got code. All right, so just next to 2020, there you'll find your code. Can you see now that they've got Python scripts over here? So if you want to learn, there's C sharp, but this Python nerd over here is very, very useful. Here, for instance, is a lot of code that you could use um, where you can then uh, learn from what they have done. Um, let's look at the first one change work set setting and there we can see the Python that we would like to do that the grad drafting view again a bit of script that will help us to do that and each time where you try and interpret this say for instance here you've got this drafting type ID so I don't have a, have a clue what this means yet but you can copy this just duplicate that and search for it okay that is not finding so it's some of the enumeration that they're using in there um, let's see here get drafting type ID of course that is a variable there it's the variable uh, let's have a look at this search and it's not finding that either okay so th obviously some more research to be done in there but 
that you can certainly learn from these examples that they give over here follow along and see if you understand what they're doing so that would be a, a good introduction into if you know a little bit about programming how to go about using Python at least if you're not familiar with Python have a look at their samples use the API have a look through it and see all the different things that you can do whatever is available in here you can leverage in Python within uh, Dynamo or any nodes that you don't have but uh, not everything that you can do in Revit is available through the API I know of a few exceptions where you can't actually do what you need to do um, but you could even go so far as to open uh, links in the background so you can edit them um, yeah so there's there's a lot that you can do but this is where you would learn about the Revit API and uh, let us know if you need any help with that and until next time, enjoy using Revit. And if you're automating and programming, um, also visit the forums and, and uh, have a great time. Until next time, bye now.